Bucher. I'm a professional development specialist with Bowers Institute, and um, I've been in the field of education in various ways for many years, from out of school programs to um, start educational startups. And I'm excited to um, talk to you all today about design challenges. So our goals for today are to walk through and experience a specific design challenge. Um, we're also going to discuss some strategies for facilitating design challenges in general and explore some adaptations for how to do this all in a virtual environment, which has become the new reality for many. Um, so we'll start with an introduction to design challenge learning, um, and then we'll actually get into some of these virtual adaptations a little bit. We're going to spend a majority of the time doing a design challenge and then reflecting on it throughout. And you've received the instructions um, for the challenge we'll be doing today, but we'll also be giving them out as we go along. And at the end, we'll have some question and answer time, but feel free as we go to um, put things in the chat box. If you have questions that come up as we go, we'll try to field them um, to make sure they get answered throughout. Um, we are going to keep you on mute um, and video off, but there are going to be moments throughout this when we will ask people to speak up and share if you're able, especially during prototyping. So um, just be prepared if you're interested in participating. We hope to have this be as interactive as possible. And again, um, if you have any thoughts that you want to throw into chat, um, feel free to do that along the way. Um, that helps us also address some comments and thoughts as we're going since um, you can't always call out during a Zoom meeting. <laughs> All right, so again, that basic um, introduction of what an actual design challenge is. Um, design challenges have been part of the Tech Interactive's DNA since before we had a physical site. Um, a design challenge uses a real world problems to engage learners in an iterative design process. Um, so here you can see our representation of this innovation design process with imagine, create, test, and reflect as an iterative circle in the middle. Um, the more metacognitive pieces of defining your problem and sharing your solution outside of that. Um, and then the layer outside of that is some critical mindsets that we'll talk more about later. Some key features of design challenges are that they're actually solvable by multiple solutions. So having very open-ended um, design challenges where students can um, come up with their own design and surprise you and surprise each other. Um, or also you as the educator do not need to know what that answer is because there's a bajillion of them. So there's multiple different ways to solve this problem. Um, it provides opportunities for iteration so the students can actually test and improve on their designs based on feedback um, or testing that they run and data they collect. Um, these also offer an opportunity to connect with participant interests and for you to make explicit connection to real world problems and future careers. So in a virtual setting, um, there's design challenges actually lend themselves really nicely to the learning environment that we find ourselves in now of um, being able to not necessarily have constant contact with the students, but periodically touch base with them throughout um, a design session throughout a week. So for instance, assigning a challenge at the beginning of a week and providing some instructions on how they're going to share out at the end. Um, supporting families with information on materials, the process, and how to support students um, during their, as they work on their design challenge um, is very important. Being able to vary the length, so um, having some quick design challenges that you might be able to do all together um, synchronously during a video chat, or having something, again, that happens, like we said, over the course of a week is great. Um, there's also an opportunity to really um, vary the different topics that you're connecting with and how you're connecting to your content areas. Um, there are also those thoughts of, right, students and us as educators are using different modes of technology. So there might be times when we want to really focus on a low tech or a some tech or all tech sort of solution. So what are the ways that students can really work asynchronously on their own after you've um, sent a challenge out to a family or given them had a phone call or distributed a packet? Um, what are those ways for them to really um, use some tech in order to capture their process or to collaborate um, in person in synchronously and remotely through video um, shared documents or an online platform that you might be using. 
Okay, so now that we've got a sense of what design challenges are like, we're going to go into the part of our session today where we get to do one. Um, so first we're going to frame and introduce it. Um, we'll proto have some time for prototyping where you, we use that imagine, create, reflect, and test part of the process. And then we'll share solutions and then we'll come back again and reflect and debrief. So it's kind of what we will be doing today. And I was just going to say that um, while we talked about some of those ways to facilitate virtually, we're going to model some of those so you can experience them today. Yeah, and if you have ideas um, for how you've done this before or think of things as well, feel free to throw them in the chat as well for others um, to get ideas. So in order to frame this challenge, we're going to start with some basic questions that we have used in the past to just frame general design challenges. So one of those is um, the guiding question of what have you created or engineered? Um, we're gonna use that um, poll everywhere link again. So for those of you who joined after we shared this, um, the link is at the beginning of your chat, um, but you can also use your text um, features on your phone to text the same link. But if you can just respond right now, what are some things you have created or engineered yourself in the past? And as you respond, it should populate. Um, I'll just populate myself with some examples. Um, the other week I made banana bread. Um, so that was one thing I, I've created recently. Um, I created a prototype for this session. Any other things folks have created or engineered in the past? Oh, somebody's made furniture, sourdough bread. You can also text more than one response to the same place. A mosaic, wow, mosaic table. table. Wow. Ambitious. Motorcycles. A container to collect berries. My berries are getting smushed, so I think I need one of those designs. I've just been using a bowl. <laughs> nice. So we have... Um, it sounds like creators and engineers of all kinds. Uh, painting, thank you. Um, bread box. So I'm gonna move on to the next question, greeting cards. Greeting cards. Nice. So the next question is, what do you think are the qualities of an innovator? So as you think about the characteristics, the adjectives you would use to de describe an innovator, what are some of the things that come to mind? Um, so again, you can send it to the same um, text message or um, website link. So creativity, thoughtful, brave, foundational, uh, knowledge and ideas. Creativity is coming up a lot, it looks like. Um, action. I like action. creativity and action as a pair. Mm -hmm. Um, brave ideas, great. Um, so at the Tech Interactive, we ha shared with you our design process before. We also have some innovator mindsets that we came up with. Um, so it's very hard, as you can see from that previous thing, to distill down what are the real um, characteristics of an innovator, but we made our best effort to come up with these five. So for us, these are the qualities that we use to reflect on the innovative, in, innovator, innovation design process with students um, and the characteristics that they're using. So curious, perseverant, empathetic, collaborative, and bold. And um, as we do this challenge, we're going to um, reflect on how we use them and also how we use the design process. And you'll notice different places you might be using these. Okay, so we're going to begin with a little fun video to sort of frame the story and the narrative behind this process. So I'm going to play. Take it. Ugh, Maria. Now that I'm home 24 seven, my dog is getting bored of me. I'm having the same problem with my dog. <laughs> you know, I think it's time we switch it up and uh, add some pizzazz to the routine. So are you saying we should build wind powered delivery devices that can take treats to our dogs? Yes, 
Let's make! This is the Tech Interactive at Home. First things first, we've got to gather some supplies. While searching, ask yourself, what kind of parts do vehicles have and how can I keep everything together? Ooh, there are some paper rolls. They could be wheels or the axle. Wooden craft sticks would create a strong base. Aha, this fabric would make a great sail. Oh no, it's an invisibility cloak! We'll definitely need some things to fasten our parts together, like hot glue, tape, rubber bands, or string. Okay, now that we have some supplies, it's time to assemble. First, build the base frame of your vehicle. And be wary of bandits. Swiper, no swiping! <laughs> you can totally add some personality to your ride. Or keep it simple with a classic design. Now, why don't we figure out a way to catch some air? Yeah. It is wind powered after all. I built a sail using some fabric and held it together with chopsticks. I built a frame out of wooden sticks to hold up some bubble wrap that then acts as a sail. Okay, let's try them out. No! Oh man, we both need more weight on the base so they don't tip over. I'm going to add a truck bed to weigh it down. I'm going to stabilize my device by widening the base and using string to support my sail. Maria, what did you do about the wheels? I tried using toilet paper rolls, but it spun out of control. Whee! So I added new wheels that will help it follow a straight path. After a few failed attempts, I think we're ready for our devices to meet our critics. Let's do this! So we now have our challenge. We're going to be building a pup cake delivery device. Um, you're going to design a dog treat delivery device that is wind powered. So create something that transports dog treats using wind power. We've added some criteria and constraints to this challenge so that you have a little more frame for it. Um, you can only use the wind to um, power your device. It has to carry it six feet, the standard social distancing length to reach your furry puppies. And um, you can only have 10 minutes to build and test. Um, you should use only available materials and we're encouraging you to not use tape or glue. We know that Maria and Sierra use some hot glue in theirs, but our challenge to you, um, we are all advanced builders at this point, um, is to use other fasteners for your device. Um, so this is your introduction to your prototyping. So um, just to reflect on what we did, so there's ways to introduce um, challenges you can do again synchronously or asynchronously. Um, thinking about how to use your design challenge question. Um, you could use videos that you create yourself. You can even have your students create videos for each other uh, where they're introducing the challenge. Um, having a story or scenario around the device that you want them to build is really important in engagement. Um, so these are some different ways you can think about it and just having you all sort of think real quick on with this design challenge, how might you inspire your students to design and build. So take a moment and reflect on that. You can throw it in chat if you want to. Um, as we move on, um, we're thinking we sent this out earlier and um, we were wondering how many people have prototypes already um, or how many people have done a little bit, but they really like more time. Um, so we'll give people a few minutes, a few 30 seconds here to respond to this and let us know where we all are at. Um, we definitely have time built in to build, so the not at all people, don't worry. We'll, we'll get there. Um, 
And the great thing about this is that uh, whether you've prototyped a lot or only a little bit or not at all, you can kind of see what that experience is like for students and what it would be like if you engage them at different points in the process, right? So here's a time when we're all gonna build together. Um, here's a time when some folks might have built some already and others are just starting um, and how those different entry points are all still okay. So it looks like we've got both ends of the spectrum of people who have done a lot and people who have done not at all. Um, so let's get started with this. If you are just starting, there's a couple ways you can engage. You can do a material scavenger hunt um, and then we encourage you to start building and testing. So think about what items around your house would work for the challenge, um, what questions you have about those materials and how can you explore those with a hairdryer or a fan to look at their properties. Um, if you are have built something or you have a chance to build something during the session, then um, testing and reflecting of which parts of the device um, can you test in order to inform the overall design and what components on your design are really working that you might need to tweak and do more. Um, and then if you've already prototyped a lot, you still have time. So we want you to push your design farther um, and think about one of these design, extra design challenges here of how can you make it more reliable and really um, perform consistently across multiple tests or try changing one of the variables. So can you increase the distance? Um, can you add more weight, more puppy treats uh, or cat treats if that's what you've got? Um, and how can you have it potentially go faster? So if you've already achieved something, um, what can you change and what can your new goal be? So we're gonna give, again, this is a reminder on materials. Um, that uh, these are the kinds of things you can use. Again, be flexible with yourself around what you can use for structure, what you can use for round things, um, what things have surface area might help capture wind, and then what things can you use as fasteners. Out of my junk drawer, I grabbed a bunch of twist ties and rubber bands that I'm gonna use to alter a design that I worked on already, so. And then a fan or hair dryer for testing and scissors and a hole punch are great. So we're gonna have you all get started um, 10 minutes, right, Amy? That's what our... Yeah. All right, so we're going to start our, our timers now um, for giving you 10 minutes. Um, and I think at this point, um, um, Allison, can we turn on people's cameras if they're interested so that we can see people building, or should we just wait until um, we're doing the sharing? What do you think, Amy? I think it's always nice to see people prototyping if you're willing to share your prototyping as you build, um, sort of seeing different people's setups. So if you are interested in turning on your camera so we can see, Erica and I will be prototyping ourselves and you can watch us, um, but um, it's always nice to see different people. So if you are interested in turning on your camera, um, you can raise your hand and Allison can um, facilitate that. Um, it looks like you have to do that, Amy, since you're the Oh, host. I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, you get all the things. All right, I'm going to start a timer. <laughs> so our 10 minutes is starting now. Um, again, if you have a device built, think about how you can tweak it and change it. Um, we will build a little bit. And then we also have some prototyping questions up. So we can um, show those to you as those are things that you can either email to families, um, you can share them with your students um, in person, well, not in person, over uh, synchronously with a, with a chat. Um, there's a lot of different ways to provide them with those pushes, those extra questions during prototyping that can really inspire them and get them to go a little farther. So when they have something partially built, which parts of the device can your team test to really inform that overall design? Um, Mine is catching the wind pretty well, but doesn't move so smoothly. So I'm going to try and problem solve the bottom of mine. Um, the other thing about this specific challenge is the um, material that you're using as your base, like that your device is traveling across can make a big difference. So that can be a variable that you change um, either at the beginning or the end, um, friction caused by carpets, for example, can really slow down devices, but having them go across a smooth surface might enable um, so, some very basic devices to move faster. So that's one way to level it depending on the um, students you're working with or the environment. 
Yeah, and just noticing that we've got some folks who are working with um, high school students and middle school students as well, that idea of where are you sort of bringing in the content and making them really refer to some of that content to inform their design. So you can throw in prototyping questions using some vocabulary that they've used before um, around friction and stability, um, having them do some calculations potentially to figure out um, what might work best. Um, maybe things around wheel radius even is exciting things to, to, um, to calculate. And we wanted to point out, we usually for this specific challenge, don't use the term vehicle or car or anything um, like that to limit um, students. So if, um, if you use generic terms like device, it allows more variation in the solutions and encourages more creativity. And that's also sort of a fun thing to play around with too, because we always know that the students will try and find loopholes in your rules and your um, design parameters. And some of them, they think they're coming up with something that will make it easier and it actually makes it more difficult. Um, so finding ways to incorporate that kind of feedback and those tweaks to the design challenge is sort of a fun way to involve the students um, and to alter it. So, well, you know, maybe let's do it this way to start off with, but I'm gonna add, throw out your design challenge tweak as an extra. So can you make it go on carpet or can you make it go off a jump um, and still be stable? So what are those ways to really find um, great ways to involve your students and their creativity and really generate some good energy around the design challenge? I think this is gonna work, Amy. I've got, we were, my straw, that's my mast, was sort of sticking. And so I'm going to try it with the paper on the bottom to cover it. We have about six minutes left. So um, if you're building something from scratch today, please um, test it before we get to the end of 10 minutes. So even if it's partially built and you're not sure it'll work, um, the best way to find out what's working and how you might wanna alter it is to test it. I'm gonna try mine right here. Have Ooh, my got hair a dryer. stability issue. Um, we did have a group the other day, we were doing a virtual um, session with them and they were testing and the team thought, there's no way our device is gonna work. And then they were excited to see that when they finally actually tested it, it was one of the better performing devices. So definitely and they were, test early and often. They were very frustrated and very down on themselves. So we didn't finish. Mine likes to flip around, which is something new that it didn't do the other day. So now it sort of likes to push this direction against that part of the sail, which is interesting. And as you're prototyping, if you have questions that come up that you think of, feel free to throw them in the chat too. Or suggestions around like, again, what folks might alter or ways that you might wanna connect this with content for different units that you're teaching. We'd love to hear your suggestions and, and the yeah. amazing things you've tried. All right, you have about Four or five minutes left. Amy, what did you make your base out of? You're muted, so I make you unmute yourself. Um, I was gonna make a really loud noise with my hair dryer. Um, mine is just a box, and then I bent it and connected a a, a file folder, which actually worked pretty well for the sale. So, let's see if it so works. Alyssa was commenting that the no taper glue constraint is really difficult. Um, it is, but it also allows you to alter something really quickly if it doesn't work. So it's really nice. Um, it might be harder to get something stable if you're used to using hot glue especially, um, but you can also, if my, if my paper didn't work and I would glued it on, I'd maybe have to start from scratch or kind of tear it off. Um, the other benefit is that it lets you reuse a lot of your parts. So. Um, so that's great. Um, Amy, Jamie is saying that they oh, can okay. share their prototype. Mm -hmm. um, and for our next sharing section too, we can um, have multiple people especially show their devices. So don't be shy about your device. 
even if it's partially built, again, that inspiration on what you did and how that might inspire someone else's design is sort of key to collaboration, especially when you're not in the same classroom. All right, we have about three more minutes, but we might only give you two. What do you think, Amy? <laughs> yeah, I think two more minutes. Um, Jamie, I put you in um, as a panelist, which is I think the way we allow people to share during the sharing. So if anybody else, we're uh, finishing up prototyping and ent entering into the sharing portion. So if anybody else is willing to show your device during that portion, um, raise your hand or put it in chat and I'll promote you to a panelist so that we can see you um, during that time. And again, don't be shy. This is a time to be bold. This is normally not something you would do. Practice one of those innovator mindsets and be bold and take a chance. Um, you also don't have to talk so we can just do a visual sharing of some of our devices. We've got Pamela also is interested. Allison, can you tell us about what you're building? Um, I basically raided my party stuff drawer and I have a Christmas cookie box, some cups, straws, and goodie bags for my best friend's um, uh, bridal shower from five years ago. So, awesome. So you can tell how much I hang on to things. Yeah, I was going to say this shelter in place has definitely um, reinforced any prevalence, any predilection I have for being a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm keeping, look, I found a use for all of these things. I need this spaghetti box desperately. <laughs> oh, and mine, you can put stuff inside. So my dog treat is, ooh, a spool of thread. I can put stuff inside and it stays in pretty well, okay. unless I tilt it. I'm using a succulent candle. That's your, okay. your puppy treat. So I think we're going to say time is up. Um, my timer is about to go off. So we're going to move on. Um, again, if you want to share, um, raise your hands or put it in the chat. Um, we'll debrief a little bit about prototyping real quick before we move on to sharing. Um, do you want me to do the prototyping yeah, scenarios? So with prototyping, um, you run into a couple different things, right? So when people are doing their prototyping and your students, right, you've got a couple of things like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to share. Can I have a few more minutes? And I know some of you are thinking that right now. Um, it's okay. Again, we want to see where the design is at, what we can learn from demonstrating and sharing our designs, and also what thinking went into folks' design. So that focus on process versus uh, final product promotes risk-taking and, again, promotes that collaboration aspect of, like, let's see what works. It's okay. Bring it up how it is. Let's see. You only have your sale. Let's see how the sale perform performs and what we can learn from that and what we appreciate about your design and your design thinking so far. The other one is, again, I'm done. I finished in the first two minutes and I'm done and I'm sitting around and I'm waiting for everybody else. Um, so again, that promoting those prototyping questions we had up earlier of how can you make it more consistent? What if, great, you've made it work, it's gone six feet, you're super happy with your design. Can you now add a layer that it actually drops off the treat um, for the puppy versus um, continuing to going or having it locked inside? So adding um, constraints and criteria um, to the I'm done people as well as having them focus on how can you solve this differently. And the other thing is that um, we have a number of open-ended questions that we put up earlier, but we usually um, suggest throughout the process. So we've been putting these tech tip links throughout that have some suggestions of the types of questions you can ask that are open-ended and really encourage students to be the problem solvers. So think about how when students ask a question or say something like this, you can put it back on them to try to figure out the solution. Okay, so now we're going to try this um, sharing. Um, virtually. So one, uh, the first thing we're going to do is a gallery walk. So um, those of you who I've promoted to panelists, or you can still volunteer, it's not too late um, to share. You can turn your camera on. Um, if you want to keep muted, you can, or you can turn yourselves off mute um, and um, share, your, um, share your prototype with us at the moment. And if you're having a hard time doing in either of those for some reason, let me know. Um, but, um, yeah, if you can 
turn your cameras on and then we're going to do a gallery walk of your prototype. So I'm holding mine up here. You can see you have to do something to allow us to start the video. Do I need to? Um, Allison, do you remember, is there something preventing? There shouldn't be. Do you, um, if, did you try to, to share your video? Yeah, it's saying that um, the host has stopped the video. So it, I think. Here we go. I'll, you gotta, Amy, you have to click the. Um... Oh, okay. There we go. Go ahead. See, try it again. Oh, I just made hey. it so the host can start video. Perfect. So it looks like Jamie's up. Melissa, Alex, and Pamela, they also. And as you look at people's devices, um, try to pay attention to if you notice anything that's similar or different. And, and if they are traveling, anything you notice about how they travel. Um, see, Erica, I'll let you. Um, it looks like some of them are still video muted. Mine says it doesn't, um, the host has disabled the video. Okay, I, ch I checked it again to allow panelists to start video, so let me know if it doesn't work. Yeah, mine still doesn't work. It looks like Alex is up. Try it one more time. Erica, you got yours going. Oh, look, your kitty's in there. Wait, is your cat your dog treat, Erica? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, what are we seeing about their designs? We've got a nice little stable cart and some ribbon wheels, it looks like, Erica. You can unmute yourself if you want to share. Alex, can we see the bottom of yours? Wow, a very simple design, elegant, with uh, some stability by the, the uh, string across it, it looks like, or a, um, a tongue depressor. Sorry, Alex, it looks like you're still on mute. Yeah, it looks like um, a lot of people aren't allowed to do the unmute gallery people. view. I don't okay, think um, let me see if I stop sharing, if you can see. Can you see uh, now? Yeah. Folks Yay. Are see the gallery right, view now. Yay. See, this is a good example of problem solving. Yeah. <laughs> so we just learned something new about Zoom. <laughs> and Alex, I just unmuted you in case you want to share more about your design. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, yeah, there's a tongue depressor on the bottom. So it's, it's all held together with a rubber band. Mm -hmm. And um, so the rubber band was causing friction on the bottom. So I covered it with the tongue depressor and a couple of um, paper clips. And then there's a little um, quarter here in the back to, to give this fork that's propping it up some stability, so. I love the use of junk mail and <laughs> <laughs> and take out <laughs> exactly. plasticware. That's great. Does anyone else want to share? You can unmute. Um, I didn't go very far with mine. I, I spent most of my time getting supplies, even thinking of what kind of supplies I could use. Yeah. I got as paper plates and a straw. That looks great. Foil. And I only had toothpicks. I was hoping I might have chopsticks, but I don't have chopsticks out here. So I didn't get very far, but it was kind of fun just doing that much. <laughs> yeah. And did you test it at all, what you'd built so far oh. with wind? Well, I put it on the floor and my fan, my overhead fan was affecting it. So I knew I was going to have to be a little more stabilized. <laughs> but it's good that it caught some wind power. Yeah. And then stability is the thing you need to work on, it sounds like. Great. I made one. Um, it's uh, from a fruit container out of my recycling with a lot of straws poking through the holes of it so that it would blow this napkin along. And then I used uh, the center of tape rolls for wheels and uh, had to weigh it down in the back so it didn't tip over and it only made it about four or five inches it wasn't very far <laughs> so did it end up spinning during that time or just slowing down well, or back wheels aren't really free 
moving. There's a lot of friction on the back wheels to move. Uh -huh. So probably redesigning the back wheels would be another step to take. But um, the process was really great. And uh, just as I was going through it, um, kept tweaking different things as I went. And that would have been, I think, really great to document as you're going along. Like yeah. your first ideas versus, you know, all these steps you take to get there. So mm -hmm. it was a really great um, exercise. Yeah, and finding ways for students to record that during the process or after is really important, right? Because sometimes they lose sight of that, but that's really the part you want them to share. Right, yeah, I agree. Thank you. I think we have time. Do we have time for one more share? Yeah, it looks like Jamie's got his set up to test. Do you want to show us how it works, Jamie? <laughs> it looks like the computer's blowing it. The <laughs> Yeah, there it goes with a hair dryer. Excellent. Can't get off mute. Okay. Um, um, how about that? Can you do it now? No? Okay. <laughs> there yeah, we go. There so go. I just built it out of uh, one bamboo skewer and a Greek yogurt container and a cardboard uh, paper tube that I cut in half. But it's way too top heavy and it just flops over. Uh, one thing I do like though, I found this off of a um, saran wrap box. It's a, just a strip of metal and that allows me to shape my sail. So I thought that was kind of clever, but it doesn't work yet. <laughs> nice. Thanks. So it's innovation in process. <laughs> Excellent. Alyssa, can you hold yours up so we can see it also? Yeah, I found the process very intimidating. I didn't have anything ready before the start of this. And I was like looking around the room. Last night was trash and recycle collection. So I was like, like, no, there's so many things I could have used that I tossed. Um, so I just had like a Tupperware, food Tupperware, and a recycled shield that I had done with the class and some um, binder clips. And that was as far as I got. It's too heavy at the top, I, it's going to fall over if I try it. So I need to stabilize the back. But I found it intimidating, actually, not fun. Yeah. <laughs> far. Well, I would say that you might have been intimidated, but that looks like a pretty good design to find all the materials and accomplish that in nine minutes. <laughs> it's Thanks. pretty impressive. And I would say test it before you think about adding something else. Go ahead and test it and see how well it performs, even just like that. Yeah, I got a hairdryer in front of it and it like spun sideways. Mm. And as we go through and think about facilitation with your students, um, there are gonna be the spectrum of kids who love this kind of thing and kids who find it really intimidating. So we'll ask you later to think about how to um, manage those different personalities and experience levels. Yeah, and support that. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to try to share my screen again. Let's um, give a loud virtual applause to those of you who shared. And the um, ones thank who, you all. The ones who were silent and, and we couldn't see, but we know you built as well. Good job. Okay. So this is an example of what um, you might be doing during sharing. So you might have students do sort of like we did where you're modeling, show, um, tell us about your design, what changes you made while you were building and what changes you would make if you had more time um, and sharing those kind of changes as you go. Those of you who are more panelists, I'm not gonna take you away from, oh, I guess I did, never mind. <laughs> I'll move on. <laughs> Sorry, Amy, I was being proactive. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, so uh, with sharing solutions, again, you saw a lot of strategies that we did right now. Um, so that idea of a gallery walk um, and having sort of a team share. So that wasn't all 24 of you, but it was about nine people or so, um, nine or 10 folks who, um, who shared and other people were observing. Um, there's ways to engage the whole class in that, right? If you've got a group sharing and then other people um, posting feedback um, in chat or whether they're recording it and sending it um, 
to you or to classmates another way, um, that's a great way to do it. Um, having a silent awesomeness challenge, um, exactly. And Jamie's saying in Zoom, you can go into breakout rooms, you can put them in little um, pairs or team sharing where they can share with each other. Again, having some way for them to document it so you know which conversations happen since you can't be in multiple places at once is a nice um, way to make them report out what their small group discussed and what they saw and how they, um, what they learned from the designs in their group. Um, a silent awesomeness activity where um, you see people's designs and then you give feedback of like what you loved about all of their designs. Um, you have folks do interviews or really do a formal showcase, right, where each of the students actually presents and in the audience is um, maybe um, you as a teacher, other, um, other educators, the classmates, um, even inviting some extra special guests from outside, um, somebody who maybe works in an industry where some of the concepts might be, um, might be uh, highlighted. Um, and then again, for yourself, thinking about how you would celebrate and include everyone and um, where and how would you would you create the share out yourself? Um, synchronous and asynchronous, what are the opportunities? And if you do a challenge over a longer period of time, you can have smaller sharings that are more informal at the beginning and then a more formal one later on as students have refined and iterated on their devices. Exactly, and having sharing out multiple times during a design process is really important. Again, for that processing, digestion, celebration, and seeing what you've achieved, even if you weren't sure about it, um, seeing what it, how it can inform other people's designs and what people appreciate about your design and your process. So now we're going to do um, a debrief on um, this session. Um, so. We'll do a debrief with you in a minute, but these are just some examples of how you might debrief if you were doing this with students. So um, you might want to debrief on the process itself or some of the mindsets, or you might want to debrief on the content connections. Um, you could use written journals, um, small groups, um, exit tickets. Um, you could have a whole class discussion. So those are all different techniques that you might use and depending on the virtual setting or the in class setting, you might vary them depending. Um, and having something, sorry, I was going to say having something like a survey or um, like a Google form where they're able to upload an image and upload some sort of thoughts and digestions um, about their process is a really nice way to do that as well. So today we're going to have you all debrief on the innovator mindsets that we shared earlier. Um, so um, really quick again, using that poll that we were using earlier, um, what innovator mindset do you think you embodied the most today? So again, those mindsets are bold, curious, perseverant, empathetic, and collaborative. So which one do you feel like you really embodied today? So I see some people felt like they were bold, some perseverant people, um, some curious, curious people, any others that people felt like they really had today? We're widely split, split at the moment between bold, curious, and perseverant. No um, so now, <laughs> I'm gonna move on to um, the next one, which is which one would you wanna try next time? So if you um, have one that you felt like, you know, maybe I didn't really get to this one today, but I really wanna focus on it the next time I would do a design challenge. Um, which ones do you feel like you would want to practice more? So collaborative, we did a little bit of collaboration in this um, format and there are ways to do that, but it, um, it wasn't as much as you could possibly do. Empathetic, perseverant, and curious. Um, so these innovator mindsets are something that we often use at the end of a challenge and have students do a self-reflection and we have this included in our innovator mindsets um, tech tip, which we have included in this session, but having them think about the different um, areas and how they felt like their strengths were and what they want to improve on um, can happen throughout. And we've seen students really engage deeply with this kind of reflection where they are taking it very seriously um, and they're very reflective and very self-aware of you know, I'm, I'm really curious. Um, I, you know, I'm interested in other people's ideas and I'm, um, I found myself using that a lot and that helped my design in these ways. Um, that, um, you know, I, next time I want to try being bold because um, I find that I'm not sharing um, 
not sharing my ideas while I'm curious about others, I'm not necessarily sharing my ideas and that is holding back my design. So it's really interesting to see how um, they delve deeply into these mindsets and really relate them um, to the design process and to their problem solving process um, in, a, in a very sort of concrete way and actionable way. So now thinking um, about yourself as a participant and then as a facilitator, um, thinking as a participant, um, what pieces of this experience really stood out for you? Um, and what parts of the process felt more empowering or more challenging? Um, we heard earlier from Alyssa that um, it was felt really challenging to find the materials and to feel this pressure to build with like, I don't even have anything around. Um, but um, share if you can go to the poll everywhere and share what pieces of the experience stood out for you um, and or what parts of the process felt more empowering or more challenging. Amy, are people able to enter two different things or just one just idea? A, you can enter more than one idea. You can send in one response and then send another one after that. So did the time limit feel empowering or challenging is my question. <laughs> <laughs> or it's just what stood out. You can also add things in chat if you wanted to clarify anything. I love that the open-ended nature felt both empowering and challenging. <laughs> That's definitely, definitely how it feels often. Oh, that was nice. So someone saying it was nice to have the topic or assignment before, and because of that, they felt more confident. Um, so the challenge then resulted in feeling empowering, which is again, a great feeling. Nice, yeah, empowering to actually do the activity and hear from other people. Um, a nice opportunity, yeah, to, to collaborate and see what's going on. Um, I think that all of this really can inform what it's like then as, a, as your student participants are doing things like this. Um, so knowing that it actually is a challenge, but that challenge is then empowering. It's also a nice thing to communicate to families as you're, um, assigning these activities and letting people know um, that it's okay to struggle and okay to then feel accomplished. Um, that's again, what makes you feel more like you've mastered something if it felt challenging. So then as a facilitator, how would you make this experience, um, how would this experience today influence how you support your students through the design challenge? So what would your experience now translate into any facilitation methods or things you might want to add or ways you might want to frame this design challenge for your students? I think just the fact that um, seeing and hearing what others did and the materials they used gave you ideas and the same would be true for your students as well. Um, chances to test more, that's great. And thinking about ways to fold that into how you assign it and um, again, how you're communicating with the families material suggestions and flexibility. Um, doing it together, again, is a nice way to energize. Um, we've had one of our partner schools, the fifth graders all did a design challenge together um, so that they really like saw each other on Zoom and felt connected. Um, I think they probably had folks muted, otherwise it might've been a little chaotic. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so someone's saying their students are finally getting the hang of the need to proactively communicate via Zoom. So using that as a tool of how can I use chat and how can I use other things or even reaching out through that. Um, that's great. Yeah, and the polling really does help pull in participants who may not otherwise share or feel shy about sharing. I've got one of those in my household. Um, so it's nice to have those ways to type in and interact. Um, and again, we have more flexibility with uh, the way that we're teaching and learning now of having something like this spill over into the evening or weekend. Um, so it's nice to have a few days longer. These are great suggestions. I love these. And then um, a couple of things to just remind yourself of uh, with these design challenges is um, you're learning and iterating too. So being flexible. 
um, and um, being flexible with yourself, uh, trying out new things, being um, clear with your students um, and your participants that you're trying out something new, um, varying your strategies. So doing some things really quickly, doing some things over a longer period of time and focusing on different aspects of the design process are great. And then allowing times for time for testing and reflecting. So just a quick reflection for you, just jot down um, quickly for yourself after this session, um, what will you try? next with um, design challenges. What's a way you maybe can fit it in in the last week of school or if school's already ended? Um, what's a way that you can implement a piece of this soon? And somebody and was asking me what um, we use to have participant answers show up live in our presentation and we used a tool called Poll Everywhere which is free and available and it can integrate with Google Slides or PowerPoint or other tools. So it allows the answers to show up as they are um, texted or entered in. And, and then someone was asking who can see or when when you use the polling, um, can you see who says what and you can't. Right, uh, Amy, is there a I setting? I think there is a setting an online one where I can go back later if you entered a name in for yourself when you answered, I can go back and see responses. Or if you were on the online one, I think you can sometimes see people's names. Um, but during the session, um, unless I'm checking that, I can't see your names as you answer. There might be settings for you to enable that, but I'm just using the basic version right now. Yeah. So if anyone wants to share in chat um, to everyone uh, what, they, or, um, what they might want to try next, we'd love to hear it. But we're also going to move on to um, Q&A. So if you have any... Go ahead, Amy. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, if you have any answers yourself, please share them or suggestions for um, other folks. Um, and if you have additional questions, we'd love to address those um, for people now. So again, put them in the chat or raise your hand if you would like us um, like to just ask it. Somebody says they're interested in planning for a chemistry class. We actually have some um, activities on our um, Tech at Home site for chem chemistry as well, I believe. So you can check those out. And bio biochemical engineering. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, we'll share out the slides after the session. Um, and we have uh, a link to a lot of those videos. Um, again, at the tech, um, I'll type it in again, um, the tech.org slash at home um, and the tech.org slash in CASA. And we have uh, these videos in English and Spanish. Um, and Amy has a convenient slide here that <laughs> refers to these as well. And we also have a lot of educator resources. Um, we've developed a lot of parent resources, like the one we sent you all um, for this session today, or student-facing parent resources on Tech at Home, but then we also have educator versions that are more classroom-focused as well. Oh, great. Someone's planning for um, a STEAM Summer Virtual Academy. So these, I think this, a lot of this will be great for that. Um, the uh, thing we use is called Poll Everywhere, P-O-L-L, -L, Everywhere. So. Um, someone asked if there's an opportunity to do another session like this in the next couple of weeks. Um, Pamela will reach out about that because um, Obviously, we did this one. Folks can watch the webinar, but if any of you are interested in coordinating a group of educators um, from your site in order to do a design challenge session like this, um, be in touch and we'll see what we can coordinate. Um, when Allison sends a follow-up email, she can um, provide some contact information for us as well. Um, So someone, uh, Alyssa asked if, if it's um, these types of design challenges feel stressful to the parents. Um, 
or whether they enjoy doing them with their kids. And I think it's going to be a range. Uh, we've definitely got a lot of folks who are um, positive about them. Um, the fact that, again, we can use lots of different stuff. It's getting their, their kids away from the screen. Um, and it does give them something sort of low stress to do as a family. So I think if you emphasize the fact that um, everybody builds, enjoy yourself, have a good time, ask each other questions, um, that that's a way to sort of make it low stress as well as using those materials you just have around. Um, it's a nice way to approach it. Any additional questions? can put them in the Q&A or you can put them in the chat. And again, we also have parent guides to support that sort of facilitation by parents and um, educator guides as well. We will be releasing a new version of our educator guide um, within the next week or so. Um, so if you sign up for our mailing list, stay tuned for that. Um, we'll send out an announcement when it's been revised. Yeah, and I think the um, the videos really do a lot of that for folks. Um, I've done design challenges with my own daughter and with her classroom, and um, we did one. There's an inflatables uh, activity where um, again you're building something that the hair dryer blows up and moves around, and we just watched the video and were able to watch it a couple times to remind ourselves of the steps. And it was a nice sort of low stress way instead of me telling her all of those directions that she was able to watch it and get it from someone else. So that also de-stresses. So if we don't have any more questions. Um, We'll stay on for the next minute or two in case people have um, any more questions or suggestions, but we really want to thank you all for attending the session today and for all the work you do every day, especially the last couple months. Um, keep in touch. Uh, we'll send out, again, the recording of this, some links to other resources, and um, an updated version of our, um, our educator tip sheet. Um, but stay in touch. We really appreciate all of you for joining us and participating. And oh, as you go, um, we do have a survey we're asking for feedback on uh, the session itself. So we'd love to hear you. If you have any feedback, um, we'll try to put the bit.ly link for the survey in the chat as well. But um, we'll send this out. But if you have a chance right now to give us any feedback, we'd love it as we iterate. Thank you, Francisco, for joining. Anyone has any last questions? Do you want to go back to the bit.ly, Amy? Yeah, here's anyone's... the bit.ly link. Um, Thanks for joining, Erica. Erica had posted a suggestion earlier, Amy, that there is a book made by Maxine um, was another fun way to introduce the challenge. Are you familiar with that book? 
I don't know that one. I'll have to check it out. Looks like a fun one. Yes, um, with younger kids, stories often work well if there's a story that related to the scenario. And they always, they definitely try and emulate a lot of the, the um, properties and discuss the vocabulary afterwards for sure. Um, so things that you bring up in a book and a story to start off a design challenge um, are things that they practice. It's like dream therapy, right? <laughs> You're doing subliminal suggestions through the power of a book. <laughs> well, yeah, I know um, our teacher last time was talking about how kids love to do the hatchet and um, challenges related to that can also really be connected to the work they're reading. Mm -hmm. And that non um, that fiction component um, can also create sort of the space for imagination and risk taking um, in a way that um, again just allows for a little bit more flexibility and more students to identify with a STEM activity and really um, take a risk and be engaged and then see themselves as STEM creators and innovators. Yeah, we forgot to mention that earlier, but um, definitely creating that STEM identity as they do the mindset reflection or as they do the challenge throughout, mm -hmm. it's important. Lovely, well, it looks like we're at time. So we'll send our last participants on their way and end the session. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks, Amy, for presenting and Allison for support. Yeah, thank you all. And we will yeah. definitely be in touch about more challenges and please reach out. Um, again, we'll put this email up as well if you need to send us any follow-up questions. Um, thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I'm going to end the session.